I'm not lying to you that I would make so many greens that I'd need to wash them in the bathtub. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you the Democratic truth. Party has um, left black voters uh, in the dust. It's almost like they want to seduce us with Obama. Gas was cheaper. <laughs> I know that my bills were cheaper. Life was better under right President. Now, I see shades of the Hillary Clinton campaign with the uh, arrogance of a Democratic Party out of touch with the Black elect. people don't wash no damn greens in no tub. You dirty ass dog. How how unsanitary are you to be washing collard greens in a tub and thinking that that makes you more relatable? See, that's how out of touch she is. How stupid she is. She thought she was giving a relatable story to make her seem black. Oh yeah. Oh, they, they, they want me to cook their collard greens. They, they bring me all their collard greens in the neighborhood. I had so many greens, I had, to, I had to wash them in the tub. You know? Just like she was in the... In the uh, you better thank a union member. You better thank a union... I think you guys can see right off the bat why it is that this interview with me, or the dialogue with uh, Lord Jamar uh, went completely viral. As you guys can see, uh, you don't wash your collard greens in the bathtub. You tend to wash them in the sink. But then again, at the same time, this same woman, the uh, current vice president of the United States, who is currently right now, as I'm speaking, getting absolutely destroyed in her interview with Brett Baer, we'll be talking about that interview tomorrow as well as the interview that she did on Charlemagne the God to go along with this video here. Yes, I'm releasing three videos tomorrow. Uh, yeah, this right here is not a good look for her. And given everything that's going on, now she claims that she's been growing peppers since she's been the vice president. So you may not know, but you will appreciate I'm the first vice president to grow chili peppers at the vice president. Okay. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Yes, completely inauthentic. Now, guys, this video right here is going to be mostly a reaction to Lord Jamar and some of the things that he had said about Kamala Harris voicing the reason why it is that he's supporting Donald Trump and why it is that black men are not exactly on board with giving uh, Kamala Harris any uh, support this cycle and even black women, too. By the way, in the last video that I did on this topic, uh, comedian and Eddie Griffin also explained in that video that... Uh, he has been running into people, black and white, and of course also male and female, who are not supporting Kamala Harris. They don't intend on voting at all. And of course, she can't do anything to uh, get their vote because quite frankly, they've never liked her. They've always seen her as fake. Before we get started, before we get started, there's a couple of things that I wanna get out of the way before we get to this reaction piece. Just, just, just two issues, okay? Do you guys remember, it was about a few weeks ago, Donald Trump released a campaign ad. It was the ad that talked about uh, Kamala Harris wanting to uh, legalize paying for uh, surgeries for inmates in prison. Now, obviously, you're probably wondering, what kind of surgery am I talking about here? Well, if the content creator says a certain word, then the algorithm will, of course, how do I say, they'll find a way to knock the video, make the ads on it limited, that type of stuff there. However, if I play the other content creator or the other person saying what it is, then chances are it probably will not hurt this video too much. But of course, I still got to put a box over it because the Breakfast Club is absolutely horrible when it comes to copyright. But Let's play that uh, that bit that Charlemagne was talking about from a few weeks ago. That ad they was running during oh, the football man. games this weekend claiming the vice president supports funding gender transition surgeries for all prison inmates and migrants in the U.S. That was nuts. That, that I, don't, was, I don't know if it I was... I would say nuts, but nuts, that was crazy. Was, that, was, that was funny. I, I, don't know, I, I don't know if it was the <laughs> backdrop of football, but when you hear the narrator say Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners, that one line, I was like, hell no, I don't want my taxpayer dollars going I to that. I definitely see that. She did that it. ad was effective. Kamala took a picture <laughs> with a transgender. And it was, it was, this is what they were saying, that it made it seem like Kamala supports transgender sex changes in jail with our money. That's what it, that's what it came yes, across. Yeah, th that, that, that what they're saying? That yes. Was, yes, it, said, it literally said uh, that Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners, and it talks about how you know uh, uh, she she supports funding gender transition surgeries for all prison inmates and migrants in the United States. That ad was impactful. Was I, it impactful like it was. I'm it not was gonna lie. I was like, damn. Was it because it was during football? Yes, I think it was doing because it was during football. The, but the last saying, week, like the contrast of it. Yes. yes. But the last week they had uh, the same thing running on Tim Walsh and said he let like don't a man want their taxpayer dollars going towards that, especially black men. Now I want to say this. Black men, one of the main things, one of the main things that's been hurting black men as far as, uh, how do I say, as far as wanting to support Kamala Harris, 
has been the T issue. I gotta say it that way because of the algorithm, but the T issue. That's something they're not exactly okay with. Also, the feminization of men. Also, to go on top of this, the fact that uh, black men in particular feel like the Democratic Party have taken their votes for granted. Black people as a whole feel that the Democratic Party has taken their votes for granted. And also, to go on top of that, uh, black people as a whole do feel like the Democratic Party has also screwed them over in a lot of ways and hasn't exactly, uh, how do I say, come through for them. Now, these are here issues that, of course, that we can talk about in other videos, but the point is this here. Black men, black women, both are not feeling it right now. And given the fact that you guys are seeing some stuff in the B-roll footage from a CNN poll that is showing that Kamala Harris's support amongst black males age 18 to 44 is down a lot from Obama, from Hillary Clinton, and don't worry, we'll talk about Hillary's husband, Bill, here in a second. And also, to go on top of that, they're also from Joe Biden. And given the fact that Kamala Harris's uh, support amongst black women is also down as well, it seems to me like black people have just, for the most part, just had enough of the Democratic Party. But still, though, there are still people that will vote for the Democratic Party politician, and she'll still probably get roughly 80% of their vote, even though it'll probably be a much, much smaller pie, or a much, much, uh, I'll put it this way here, it'll be a large piece of a very, very small pie, a pie, a pie unlike in 2020, or 2008, 2012, or 2016. The point is, people of color, black people in particular, they're fed up. What did the Democratic Party do the other day? So they sent Obama out to basically campaign. And of course, I did a video on that. And I'll be linking it in the description box. It'll probably be at the very end of this video in the end cards. I advise you guys to check it out. And Obama, of course, was expressing his concern over the fact that the brothers just don't want to show up and vote for her. This girl put out a TikTok, and I'm about to play for you guys, roughly a, a minute and 14 seconds, basically explaining other reasons why it is that black people, black men in particular, are not exactly uh, feeling Kamala. Black men, you voting for Kamala Harris? Because you know Obama told you to. Let's talk about it. So yesterday, Barack Obama decided it was a good idea to come out of his house, save Kamala Harris's sinking ship in Pittsburgh and talk shit about Trump for a few minutes and then gather a bunch of black men behind signage that says black male voters and basically tell them you better vote for Kamala Harris. The numbers are not looking good and especially amongst the brothers. You guys supported me when I was running and I expect you to support her. I expect you to vote for Kamala Harris. It's the audacity for me. First of all, you can't tell any black man what to do ever. That's first of all. Second of all, when is he massa? When is he gonna think that he could go in front of a bunch of black men and tell them what to do? Like, is that what we're doing right now? Like, who made him in charge of what black men do or don't do? So the small percentage of black men who were either going to vote for Kamala Harris or were leaning and undecided, but leaning towards her, they're absolutely not gonna vote for Kamala Harris. Now that doesn't mean they're gonna vote for Trump, but they're for sure not voting for her. The pride issue. Black men are very, very prideful. All men, quite frankly, should be prideful to a certain degree, a healthy amount of pride. You shouldn't just have pride just to be having pride or outrageous pride, but you should definitely have pride in yourself. You should definitely have some self-worth. You should definitely feel that way. And of course, black men are very, very proud, okay? And you're not going to try to bully them into supporting somebody. Trust me, I know this from back in 2011, 2012, trying to convince people that Obama was actually hurting them more than helping. And of course, I got a lot of backlash and I got a lot of people who quite frankly did not want to listen to me. Some of those men I've ran into since and they've told me that I was right. Saw one of them the other day actually wearing a MAGA hat in the mall where I live at. Yeah, I'm actually beginning to see it. I didn't really believe it before, but I'm starting to see more and more black men who are willing to say, hey, look, you know, I'm no longer down with this crowd over here that lied to us for so long, of course, has used us for so long, and of course, as Bill Clinton points out in this next segment, has been trying to replace us for so long. America is not having enough babies to keep our populations up, okay. so we need immigrants that have been vetted to do work there wouldn't be a problem. Now, guys, I've talked about immigration for a while, but Bill Clinton, of all people, probably at this moment in time, is probably not the person black people want to see. You see, it was the current president of the United States, Joe Biden, who came up with the 1994 crime bill that pretty much locked away an entire uh, generation of black males. And Bill Clinton is the one who signed that bill as president. And also, to go on top of that, when he says we're not having enough babies, I think the problem is that we're aborting too many babies. We're actually cutting off an entire race 
uh, before it can actually grow. It's really bad too, because when you, when you look at this census post 2030, when it actually gets re-released, the census is going to look wonky as hell. Many people think that, uh, oh, white people are going to be at like 50% or something like that. No, they'll probably be at 58%. Hispanics will probably be at like 25%. And blacks, of course, who are currently at 126 they might be below 10, which is actually quite sad given the fact that you've got the highest murder rate at this moment in time, the highest abortion rate at this moment in time amongst race. Also, the highest obesity rate amongst that race. I've also, to go on top of that, the highest disease rate, especially STDs with women, is not looking too good. It's actually very, very sad. And, of course, the Democrats and Democrat politicians who run these very, very large, big blue cities, they're mostly, for the most part, an orator or the main orator behind the destruction. Also, the culture argument, that type of stuff there. Of course, if you keep voting for it, then after a while, people just aren't going to feel sorry for you. However, black men are, in fact, waking up, especially black men and some black women, too which is where we get to with Lord Jamar's piece. You see, the Democratic Party thought that it would be a good idea to put somebody out there. And by the way, Obama himself did not even want Kamala Harris to be the nominee. They He actually wanted an open primary. But they thought it was a good idea to let the diversity hire vice president be the Democratic Party nominee. Try to pass her off as black when everybody knows that she's really half Indian, half Jamaican. Of course, we have talked about this before in several videos. I don't think I really need to do that, especially given the fact that Lord Jamar here actually points this out over the course of this reaction, which, of course, I've taken a while to get to. But the fact of the matter is, is that people aren't feeling it, not just because of her skin color or the fact that she's not really black, even with a race, but the fact that she's not black culturally. Kamala Harris prides herself on being from California, but she was actually raised in Canada. That's going to come up over the course of this in a little bit. So let's go ahead and get to it. First of all, there was more police brutality against black people under Obama's term than I think anybody's. So what the f*** are we talking about here? And he was your black president. He was your so-called black president. Even though when you really look about how he grew up, he wasn't. He not black like how we black. You understand what I'm saying? Um... You're not no multi-generational black. Um, you haven't lived the American black experience. And, and living in Hawaii, you know, is not growing up with... Now, that little bit about Obama there, which is what I decided to start with, that's going to be coming up again a little bit later on. More from me than from Lord Jamar. The reason why is because, once again, it kind of goes to the overall experience. Like I said, this is a woman who is now saying that she cook collard greens, and also to go on top of that, wash them in the bathtub. I don't know anybody who does that. I'm from the South, okay? I live in the South. When you're in the South, chances are, especially if you're working class, even if you're a working class white kid, or if you come up in a lower middle class working class, uh, even if you come from one of those uh, lower middle class white homes, chances are you went to school with black kids, even Mexican kids as well. And also you had Asian kids too. The point I'm trying to get to is that the South is actually pretty diverse. You kind of learn at a very young age. I mean, of course, people love to point out the fact that we have a past of slavery and Jim Crow, but we were also the first to get over our racial tensions. I just want you to know that. I mean, all you got to do is just look up the old interviews of Martin Luther King when he went to uh, Chicago. I don't think I need to say anything else more. I advise you guys, please go check those out. Still, though, let's get back to this. Oda. She grew up in Canada, went to elementary school, high school, and started college up there. Then she went, to the, she went to Howard. So, come on, stop it. Stop acting like she's so black. Oh, and another thing about Trump, I want to say, people will talk about the Central Park Five. Well, well, he was against the Central Park Five. Well, first of all, at that time, he was a Democrat, okay? So let's put that out there. He thought in his mind when he took out that fucking article that he never did mention them by name in there. But when he took out the article, he thought they were guilty. So many people have fallen for this Trump is a racist because of the Central Park Five thing. Look, a crime was committed. That is what happened. And Trump was angry, like very angry, like a lot of New Yorkers were. By the way, Trump was a Democrat then. The judge in the case was a Democrat, the prosecutors were Democrats, and the cops themselves were Democrats. This is back when Democrats were actually tough on crime. So maybe if you're going to fall for this whole race narrative thing and say Trump is a racist, then 
Maybe you might want to look at the history of the Democratic Party and how racist they've been over the years. Just saying. But when she made comments like the Kyler Grinch comment, I don't see how any black person can not be offended by that, man. That's crazy. It's disingenuous. It's insulting. It's, it's, it's insulting to my intelligence. Like, you just think you could just, you know, just put on the mask of something real quick and just placate to me, and I'm just going to give you what you want. No, no. I'm sorry, no. And you're not gonna pretend to be black and then, but then not f with us? Like, look at her inner circle. Go, go Google Kamala Harris's inner circle, like her best friends. They're all white women. She don't f with black people like that. Only when it's time. Yeah, and she's also had more whitey than blackie. That's all I'm gonna be saying about that, okay? Because obviously, if I keep going too far into that, I'm gonna get removed from this platform. But still, though, her husband is white. White and of course the jewels. And we recently found out that he was a girlfriend beater, got the nanny pregnant, or you know, got his daughter's nanny pregnant, made her abort the kid. I mean, they're saying it was an intentional miscarriage, but that basically was abortion. Look, Obama had this problem too when he would run the race narrative, the hypocrisy. He would constantly come out and basically play the race card. And then you looked at his cabinet, you looked at all the people that he added to the administration, czars, and they were all white. I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of peculiar for somebody who's going to cry racism and then turn right back around and put the same people that he accuses of racism or the same color of people that he accuses of racism in the White House with him at exorbitant rates. I'm just saying that it's, quite frankly, kind of ridiculous, but we got more to talk about. He pulls out the fucking black, the black talk. Other than that, she don't talk like that with her two, and, and. All of this shit about women's reproductive rights and all this bullshit. First of all, that's I hate that that term. It's not reproductive rights. It's the right for a woman to be sexually um, irresponsible and to murder a child. That's what y'all are fighting for, okay? Reproductive rights would mean the right to have a child, like to actually be able to give birth. If you're fighting for reproductive rights, to reproduce means to actually have. Reproduction. Y'all motherfuckers is fighting for the destruction of reproduction. Of reproduction. And, th and thinking that a woman's right to her body and all this stupid shit. First of all, Mrs. Emphoff, you don't even have a child. You never even gave birth to a fucking child. So how dare you start talking about women's reproductive rights? How dare you also, when you were in um, California, lock up mothers for their children's truancy. And she even... 100%, but let me go ahead and tell you right now the reason why it is they keep running the whole abortion thing, which, by the way, is not reproductive rights at all. I mean, if anything, reproductive rights would be for the child because the child is what's actually being produced. And yes, I'm very, very pro-life, especially in the sense that I believe that uh, life begins at the moment of conception. You're probably wondering why it is I'm still supporting Trump, even in his position to send it back to the states. Well, you got to get in power so that way you can legislate. All right, you got to handle it at the state level. Besides that, the pro-life movement does, in fact, have a lot of pro-life grifters who are going to go out of their way to sabotage the uh, Republicans in this next election cycle because they got to keep the issue on the table so that way they can receive more and more cash. I'm talking about you, Lila Rose, all right? If you come across this video and you say something, please fight me on it. I'm not trying to threaten anybody or anything. I'm just simply saying that maybe you should because every time I turn around, it's always Donald Trump's not tough enough on abortion. But I just figured I'd go ahead and get that out of the way. Just more and more and more saboteurs on the right. But still, the thing is this right here. The reason why it is that they want to continue to throw the abortion issue out there is because, as I said before, they're trying to replace you. And they're using somebody who looks like a mochaccino. That's what I call her because she's not really black. I mean, she just looks like a... I did a video on her yesterday where during the Columbus Day speech, she looked white. Just kind of, just, just kind of crazy. Just figured I'd put that out there. The reason why they do that is because you've got other liberals out there, richer liberals who make donations to Planned Parenthood. Because, you see, if they make donations to Planned Parenthood, if they've got federal government taxpayer-funded abortion to go along with it, they can speed up the process when it comes to completely cutting off the line of somebody coming into the world or a line of uh, reproduction, more and more people actually coming into the world. It would actually make the black race much, much larger, possibly even more prosperous. They're trying to get rid of you. They've been trying to get rid of you for a very long time. 
Bill Clinton's uh, measure of trying to lock up black men, especially those who had gotten out of jail or gotten out of prison, who may have actually been trying to, I don't know, put their lives back together and revoking their parole. That right there was a bit of a prophylactic measure, if you think about it, because some of those men actually had wives and girlfriends at the time, and some of those men may have been needed in those households. I'm just simply saying, but that's another topic altogether. Let's get back on track. And I hate the people that say, oh, he's been bankrupt this many times. That's what smart businessmen do. First of all, you, all companies are not made to last. Some companies are made to be disposable. But y'all don't know that because you're not business people like that. You don't know, first of all, and people that are successful, you know how many failures they've had in order to be successful? Like, all your failures pre prep you for your success. Exactly. Truth be told about Trump is that he's been around since the 1970s. I've been saying this anytime somebody brings him up. He's been around since literally the 1970s, early 70s, by the way. Since he's been around, he's created billions of dollars in wealth. Skylines in New York. Also, the, scary, also the, uh, <laughs> the ice rink, that's him too. Movie stars came to him. Television stars came to him. Politicians all come to him. Yes, he's been on both the Democratic Party side and Republican side. But he's always been a very, very successful businessman. Yes, he has had some instances where he was uh, bankrupt. But, of course, he's also recovered from that. Now, I'm not going to make this video explaining bankruptcy, but the man's successes definitely outweigh the failures. And, by the way, sometimes failures can lead to greater success. You ever heard the expression, when one door closes, another one opens? It's something that, quite frankly, people get blackpilled about. They think that the world just all of a sudden ended for them after one failure. No, no, no. You take the failure and you use it to go out there and create another success. Donald oh, Trump was a success story. Still is a success story. And by the way, if he's such a damn failure, how the hell did he become president? Oh, wait, that's why they're going to say uh, Russia again. You know what's really sad about this entire thing is that if you, if you lives, had just simply, I don't know, just allowed the Hunter Biden laptop to go through Donald Trump would be out of your life right now. He would actually be leaving at this moment in time. He would actually be leaving the presidency. Of course, they probably would try to impeach him three or four more times on the way out the door. But still, if you just, I don't know, let that story about Hunter Biden's laptop go through, you might be Donald Trump for good because he would have pulled the four years and once again, no harm, no foul. This video right here was about the black experience and why it is that Kamala Harris is not liked. Well... When I say not liked, obviously there's hyperbole there. Roughly 80% of black people are still going to vote for her. Last number I saw was 79%. And of course, I showed you guys the stuff in the B-roll footage. Of course, what you're going to get is low turnout, but a higher piece of the vote amongst that low turnout. But still at the same time, though, Trump's still going to get roughly anywhere between 16 to 20%, 21 maybe. And you guys can obviously see that people are waking up. Let me go back to Obama just for a second before I close this video out. Just kind of compare and contrast the two. It won't take very long. Obama's past was raised in Hawaii, father supposedly from Uganda. I personally believe it was Augusto Veraca, but uh, yeah, algorithm, of course. People also thought that it might have been Frank Marshall Davis. I don't think it was him. I think it was Indonesian. But still, at the same time, raised in Hawaii, eventually comes to Chicago. White mother, stepfather was Indonesian. I don't believe Lolo Sotoro was the father. I'm just simply saying, you know, there was another Indonesian involved. I'll probably try to find the video and link it in the description box. Anyway, so you guys, if you guys want to get all conspiratorial, but still, Obama's experience was not the experience of the traditional black man or black woman in America. Also, to go on top of that, you, you know, had the fact that he was also mixed, which many black people saw and automatically thought to themselves, you look, as one of our own was becoming president. I can understand why they voted for him in 2008. 2012, I could even understand to a certain degree. I didn't vote for him in either of those elections. I don't, I'm not shy about that at all. But Kamala Harris, Kamala Harris, as for comparison, Kamala Harris, raised in Canada, middle class, not working class at all, not even below poverty line, always somewhat wealthy, has a past of hiking up her skirt to get things done. Willie Brown's ex side piece. She was also one of the prosecutors in the Michael Jackson case in the early 2000s, 2003. Part of the, probably the biggest reason why it is Janet Jackson don't care for her too much because she tried to lock up her brother. I'm not going to get too much into that, but of course, if you look into that, you'll see that she was actually one of the prosecutors in that case. Of course, black people love Michael Jackson, I and mean, it would be a shame for these people to know that this woman actually tried to lock him up 
which I can understand why people might feel that way, but I'm still saying at the same time, though, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an issue that is near and dear to some people's hearts. The fact of the matter is that this woman, nothing is real about her. 100% fake, nothing American about her, and definitely nothing black American about her. And that really is the biggest reason why it is that black men themselves have kind of soured her. And also, like I've said before many, many other times, she's a hoe. And black men, quite frankly, don't respect hoes. They never have, they never will. Just goes to show exactly how far the Democratic Party is as far as being out of touch with the average ordinary person. I showed you guys that clip at the very beginning of the video to go along with the montage because I wanted it to kind of come around full circle. Basically, the Democratic Party just said, we're going to put a, a face up there that's not white, and we're going to try to sell you this as black, and you should support it because it's black. And obviously, black men have looked at this, and they've said, hell no, I ain't voting for that hope. With that right there being said, guys, make sure you guys please leave a comment in the comment section. I would love to hear what you guys have got to say. Please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please cut the notifications on, and I'll see you guys later.